everybody, it's Isabel here from Cow and Beef Library and today I'm going to be making a giant Jaffa cake. Now, if you're like me, you can't eat just one Jaffa cake, it's several at a time. So this makes it easier because it's just one big Jaffa cake. Now what I'm going to go through are the ingredients first, okay? You need 135 grams of orange jelly, that's one block, okay? You need two tablespoons of orange marmalade. If you've not got this, don't bother because uh, it doesn't matter. It just adds a wee bit extra flavour to it. And 350 mils of water. Okay. Now, to make this sponge, I've got two eggs, 75 grams of caster sugar, 75 grams of self-raising flour, and 75 grams of butter. Okay, and then on the top... I've got a bar of chocolate, okay, which I'll make later on. So I'm going to start with the jelly because the jelly will take a wee while to set, obviously. So what I've done is I put my cubes of jelly in here, but how I, I uh, cut them up is with a pair of scissors. I actually find it's much easier to cut them up with a pair of scissors than it is to try and pull them apart or cut them with a knife. So just cut them with a pair of scissors. And then I put in my two tablespoons of marmalade in here with my 350 mils of water. Now I'm just going to stir this until it's all melted. Like that. Right, now I have taken a plate. The plate's got a wee bit of dip on it, as you could see a lip. And I've covered it in cling film. Okay, this is just to make it easier to take the jelly out of the plate when it's set. So I'm going to pour this jelly into the plate. Okay. What you will find as soon as it's a bit spread out is that it should set pretty quickly. When I say pretty quickly, probably about two hours as opposed to four, okay. That's my um, pieces of orange peel here. Okay. So that's my jelly into the plate. What, and I'll put that to the side. You can't put it in the fridge until it's cooled down, folks, okay? And what I'm going to do now as I've taken a big plate, a big bowl, this is a, a big tin, sorry, roughly 10 inches, okay. And I've floured it and buttered it, but I decided, since it's a loose bottom tin, I've put a bit of foil in it there. Put the paper in it as well. So, what I've taken out right, is 75 grams of butter, 75 grams of caster sugar, 75 grams of self-raising flour, and I'm going to pop in there two eggs. Now I've put a tiny bit of um, baking powder in as well, okay? So I'm going to pop the two eggs in. Now these are large eggs I have here. Here they are. So I'm just going to give them a wee whisk. And they're all swished up. And now I'm just going to pour them into the bowl. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix them all together with the mixer. You could do this with a hand mixer or a balloon whisk and just really get it all incorporated together with no lumps of butter or uh, anything else. You want it all nice and smooth. Hello folks, that's me beat up the sugar, the flour, the eggs and the butter. So that was 75 grams caster sugar, 75 grams self-raising flour, 75 grams of butter and two large eggs. Now the two large eggs should be at room temperature. You should always bake with um, eggs at room temperature, not straight out of the fridge. If you take them straight out of the fridge, they don't rise. This, uh, it doesn't make the butter rise the same, okay? So that's it beat up. So what I'm going to do now is pop that into the tin. And this is my tin again. It's a loose base tin to make it easier to come out. Because it's a loose base tin, I have lined it 
just so that the batter doesn't come out the bottom. I don't think it would, but anyway, just in case, okay? So here we go. I've only got a little batter in this. I'm hoping it's not going to be too thick a base for it. shouldn't take very long to bake because it is very thin so I'm going to check it after 10 minutes or so and this is it so as you can see it's not very thick because it's not a very thick uh, tin I'm using or deep tin shall I say not thick but it's not a thick batter okay so I'm going to pop that in the oven for 10 minutes to start when it's 180 degrees okay so I'll just keep an eye on it and I'll let you know once I've got it out again just how long it took hello there that's Isabel this is the sponge that I made earlier can you see just popped it onto a plate now it took about 25 minutes I didn't think it was going to take that long but it did take that long as you can see it's not very thick but we don't want it to be too thick where it's supposed to be a Jaffa cake they're not terribly thick anyway. Now, this is my jelly that's set. And I put it on a piece of cling film, but I'm not sure how this is going to come off because I've never tried it before. <laughs> so we'll try it now, shall we? Actually, what I'm going to do, just to make sure it sticks, is put a wee bit of chocolate on here. And I hope that that makes it stick. Once it cools, so that you don't end up with the jelly coming away from the cake. So what I'm going to do is just lift this off. And place it on top of the cake. Just like so. And tease the edge off. Actually, that comes off really well, so that's an idea if you're doing something like that. Just get it to, to um, put on a piece of cling film. Oh, there's a wee bit extra on this edge, so I'll just take it off. Now, what I've done here is I've actually um, melted a bar of chocolate. And I've let it cool okay I haven't left it warm because if you put warm chocolate on top of the jelly the jelly will just melt oh dear <laughs> Never mind, we'll manage somehow. It's actually starting to harden already, that's why it looks so strange. Anyway, that's what I would usually do is put a wee zigzag on it and just leave it that. But I'm sure when it's it's fully um hardened, that'll taste just as taste just as good anyway. Okay. Here's your jaff cake finished. Chocolate's too thick on the top, <laughs> but anyway, it tastes lovely. Speak to you soon. Bye.